is suffering necessary necessary in the story before awakening i studied a lot of tolly and don miguel and had glimpses for years but felt a clear shift recently after a huge loss that hurt me deeply can be can be you know if life is too good why would you ask questions so you know when deep suffering happens it, it sort of like forces you into some form of presence or looking at it my experience is that people will self-medicate and stay in their illusions until something comes along that's too strong to push them out of that so i got into this so early i think because i went through a lot of suffering in childhood there was a lot of really sad things that happened in my family like really sad things and um trauma and so i was pushed into asking questions at a very young age and i'm so grateful for that you know i i bow to that suffering that happened even though i'm so sad for my family members that went through it and what happened but it um it spurred me to ask questions at a young age if that hadn't happened you know it would have i wouldn't have asked the questions you know i would have gone out and get a job and settled down and had kids most probably I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that but i just wouldn't have asked questions at such a young age and i really started asking questions young you know what's this about and that often happens you know you have immense suffering you're like what's the point to this why why would we suffer what's the point to being happy you know and these questions you know they're the beginning of it they're not the end of it like don't get stuck in that but they're the the beginning of a change happening which is really freaking profound that an animal a mammal can do that can ask why it's alive and what's the point of living and what's going to happen when it dies it's like such a brilliant thing that appears it doesn't appear in other animals like Khaleesi doesn't sit there and have existential angst and be like I don't know the meaning of my life um but I never like to commit to strongly to things because in the end I don't know and I think that there's a possibility that some people are born free and then often they're labeled as having um mental disability like a cognitive disability or something or um they're neurologically diverse no one hits the lottery and goes to an ashram well actually i do come across very a lot of very wealthy people so in my teaching i've come a lot across a lot of wealthy people so um that's not actually my experience larry that money comes with difficulty and i think that people that win the lottery i think half of them say their life got worse after winning the lottery i think it's something like that john how does one know whether one is being disassociative with their practices great question john and i don't know you know i can answer that as a whole because it's so different from every bit uh, everything but if you're having really strong motions coming up and strong thoughts then maybe not putting the attention into i am but going in and exploring those feelings and then when there is not such strong emotions or thoughts then putting your attention in the i am but it's a really good question because you know you've got to work out your barometer of when they're strong or not because they're also habitual so you know you can just keep moving away from those habitual thoughts and feelings but when they become stronger then you want to investigate them and look you know so just mix it up 